Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be continuing my series on food production after a societal collapse. In this video, I'll be discussing food foraging and crop selection. I have many friends who have put a great deal of effort into learning how to identify wild food plants in order to handle the food situation after a societal collapse has occurred. This is a wonderful body of knowledge to have, but there are a few problems with the idea that you're going to be able to forage for food as your primary means of eating after a societal collapse situation has occurred, and I'll tell you why. First off, there are a great many people out there that believe this is the way to go, and so the competition for wild food stuff will be intense. So intense that the supply will be quickly, and I do mean quickly, depleted. Second, for the most part, the edible plants that you can forage in the wild will produce maybe 200 or 300 calories a day, if you're lucky. You need, at a minimum, approximately 2,000 calories or more a day. Uh, food foraging of wild plants works best if the wild plants are used as a supplement to your main food supplies to add variety and interest to your diet. I know this is something that is really hard to hear for a number of people out there, but this is truly how it is. So here, are, so, here you are in a situation where you need to produce food in the most efficient way possible. Crop selections that are geared for high caloric value and long storage capabilities must be the priority. If your garden space is small, are you or you only have a small amount of soil amendments, then this becomes quite critical. The number one food crop choice is sweet potatoes if you live in a climate that can grow them. Sweet potatoes are high, have a high caloric value, taste great, and will keep better than almost anything else you can grow, and are re relatively easy to grow. You can harvest sweet potatoes, wash them, and put them in a cardboard box and store that box under your bed and those sweet potatoes will easily keep for a year or more. The next crop to consider are pumpkins and squashes. Now these are relatively easy to grow. They are also a crop of high caloric value. They taste good and certain cultivars will keep for a year or more if properly stored. The best choices in this category are first the winter squash cultivars, in particular butternut squash. This squash has more edible meat to it per squash than any of the other cultivars and is resistant to most squash pests, as well as being a wonderful keeper. You can store butternut squash easily for a year, and the seeds store well to be planted for the next season. Pumpkins are another excellent choice to grow. Pumpkins can be a good keepers too. You can usually store them over the winter with success. Certain pumpkins can be kept for a year or more. It depends on the variety that you have. Pumpkins have high caloric value and are easy to grow. The seeds of pumpkins have medicinal properties and the pumpkin seeds are easy to store to be used to grow for next year's crop. The next food crop to consider is regular potatoes. Now if you live in a climate that does not support sweet potatoes, then this crop would need to be of greater importance to you. Potatoes are a wonderful root crop that will keep through a winter if properly stored. The potato is not as good of a keeper as the other crops I have discussed, but because of its high caloric value and its capacity to produce large amounts of potatoes for each plant, it's a very good choice. Potatoes can be easy, easy to grow or difficult, depending on the insect issues of your location. All in all, they're an excellent choice. The next crop, crops to grow are beets, turnips, and rutabagas. These, are, these crops will produce good amounts of food in a relatively short period of time and they are good keepers. With proper care you can store these vegetables for a winter successfully and they are relatively easy to grow. Next comes the tomato. The tomato is a highly perishable crop but you can dry tomatoes for long-term storage with great success or 
can have them if you have the equipment expertise you can can them the tomato plant produces huge crops from very little garden space and tastes wonderful they're a bit trickier to grow but are well worth the garden space they require a long growing season so you'll have to start tomato plants indoors several months before they are planted out in your garden patch the best types to grow are the cherry and grape varieties these are generally much more resistant to disease and uh, than the larger types of tomatoes but grow what you have They're, they are worth it and the seeds can be easily kept for next year's crops the next items to consider are peanuts peas beans and lentils these are an important food crop and can be good keepers but they're even more important because they enrich your soil for the next year's crops these crops also have good protein values an important point to consider also peas and beans will grow quickly and produce food sooner food sooner than most other crops peas can be planted very early in the spring as they are frost hardy beans need to be planted a little later you need to be living in a warm climate to grow peanuts but if you are in such a spot these are the one of the best crops that you can grow high caloric value a vegetable that produces oil and is high in protein and enriches the soil to boot you can't beat it if you live in the right area sunflowers are an excellent next choice they'll produce a seed that is a high protein and oil content that is critical to include in your diet a sunflower is not a difficult thing to grow and will grow in most areas and the seed is easy to harvest and store for next year's crops the next crops to consider are things like kale, collards, and mustard greens, and that kind of thing. These crops are cool weather crops and can be grown early in the spring and in the fall. With care, you can keep a regular supply of these greens going all through the winter. They grow relatively quickly and will keep on producing through your growing season. They do not store well and are best used as fresh greens. I'll go into details of these crops in an upcoming video. Corn is not a good choice to grow, try to grow in a survival situation. I know this might sound strange, but the fact is that corn is a heavy feeder, meaning it needs a lot of soil nutrition, especially nitrogen, and everything in nature loves corn, especially raccoons. The chances of you actually harvesting a crop or even one single ear of corn aft from all your hard work is remote. Carrots are an excellent food crop, but they're very tricky to grow and require a long growing season. They taste wonderful, but the chances of you producing a viable crop are limited. The brassica family of vegetables, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, these are very tricky to grow and are plagued with a horrible white moth whose caterpillar devours these plants with gusto. I have grown vegetable gardens all over the bulk of North America and there is no place that does not have these horrible pests. I would not recommend you attempt growing these vegetables until you have a few years of food, food production under your belt. They are highly nutritious but they take up a lot of room and have serious insect issues. Now I will go through how much of this you need to grow for each person. Now to begin with, understand that you're not going to have wheat products, so bread, pasta products are, aren't going to be part of your diet unless you have them stored someplace. And also rice is not going to be part of your diet unless you've got those stored. So you have to grow more of these uh, vegetables than you know in a modern society setting where you go to the store and you buy a few sweet potatoes or what have you sweet potatoes and other root vegetables are going to be the main main source of your diet okay all right okay for sweet potatoes you can average four to seven good sized sweet potatoes per plant if your soil is adequate as a major food crop, if you budget 15 to 30 sweet potato plants per person, you would get five to six months worth of sweet potatoes for one person. 
So plant even more of these to get a full year's harvest to help buff buffer your food production against possible crop failure years because they keep so well. Always try to grow more of these than you need for this reason. For butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and pumpkin, a vine can produce two to five good-sized fruits. A rough guesstimate would be 20 assorted winter squash and pumpkins for a five to six month period for one person. Plant more of these to help buffer your food production against possible crop failure years because they keep so well. Always grow more of these than you need for this reason. The next crop is regular potatoes. A healthy potato plant can produce from two to five large potatoes or several small potatoes per plant. Potatoes do not keep as well as the crops already discussed, so plan on only being able to store them through a winter, maybe three or four months if you're lucky. A potato a day over four months comes to 120 potatoes per person or about 40 plants per person. Potatoes can be harvested as they are maturing to spread out the harvest over a longer period of time. That's very nice. The next crops are beets, turnips, and rotabagas. 120 to 150 assorted plants per person is a good ratio to consider. These plants can stay in the ground over several frosts, and when you do finally harvest them, they keep very well over the winter. Tomatoes are the next crop to consider. Tomatoes are prolific producers and will provide great eating through the summer months, and then you can dry them for winter use or can them if you have the equipment. You can't grow too many tomatoes, but garden space is usually limited, so 8 to 10 healthy, good producing tomato plants per person would be a good starting spot. The next crop is sunflower seeds. A good healthy sunflower plant can produce a great deal of seed. Budgeting 6 to 8 sunflowers per person is good. More is better if you have the room because of the oil and protein content of the seed. The next crop to consider is the beans and peas and lentils and peanuts. These are great for fresh eating in the summer months and will dry for long-term storage. The average yield is 4 to 6 pounds per 10-foot row of any of these vegetables. Grow as much of these as you can because they can store very well. If a person ate two pounds of beans pea products in a week, that would be eight pounds a month. So a bare minimum of 40 to 50 pounds per person would be a good goal to shoot for. The next crop to consider are collards, kale, mustard greens, and that kind of thing. A healthy 10 foot row of collards would be enough for one person for the bulk of a year. A little more than this for kale and mustard greens. In my next video, I'll go into the details of how much land this amount of food production requires. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.